How would you describe this place? White Africa. White Africa, is that where I am? Did I get confused, I get lost on the way to Chisinau? According to Andrew Tate, I am actually in Africa. It's just got white people. So yes, today we're gonna to react to another video from Andrew Tate. And it's gonna be about his comments about life here in Eastern Europe. And I thought when I heard it first, that he meant that it's kind of like South Africa where white people live in relative luxury compared to the rest of the African continent. But in fact, that's probably not what he meant. He probably just meant that, yeah, it's third world here in a country like Moldova. Let's get into the video. I'm gonna to react to a series of clips and show you what I think of Andrew Tate's take on life in Eastern Europe. Bye, Ekeli. Sar Experience. This is the grand central station of the capital of the country. The card machines don't work, they don't take card, and the toilets don't flush. Welcome to Moldova. <laughs> That's quite amusing. Uh, what can I say to that? Is it as bad as that today? This clip was shot five years ago. Definitely things have improved. When I said to my boys in, in Bucharest, I'm coming here, they said, eh, you're gonna have problems there. I said, why? Goes, There's very little money, and the money that is held by anyone is mafia, all. I haven't even seen any money. Like, at least in Buc Bucharest, you see Ferrari, Bentley, Gucci, Prada here. This is where in the capital, I can't even fucking find it. Can't even find a cash point, mate. I don't think it's the case that you're gonna have a lot of problems if you come here as a foreigner and that the mob is gonna shake you down. I think that's way too exaggerated. And actually you will see those kind of expensive cars nowadays on the streets of Chisinau. But again, that was five years ago. But let's see how he feels about life in Eastern Europe now. You're gonna see how Andrew Tate got actually scammed by some Ukrainian models. Got that video here, down below in the description as well. And also, yeah, him basically pretending to be a soldier, but actually choking in front of Transnistrian real soldiers although not special forces you can watch that video as well up here and down below so it's funny he's basically describing here moldova Chisinau as white african talking down about how awful it is and how dodgy it is and how dangerous it is uh, and some of that is definitely true the economic development here is not great compared to the rest of europe but it's not dangerous to come here at the moment touch wood that there isn't a war like there is in Ukraine but you know I don't feel safe unsafe here in the center of the capital uh, Chisinau is actually pretty chilled but let's see how he reacts to talking about other parts of Eastern Europe in inverted commas look at this we're living amongst the castles the ancient castles that humans built do you have any idea how much human time went into building these buildings back in the 1500s peasants cutting stone like you peasants work now cutting the fucking hamburgers same shit and they built all this, all this human time and effort and energy, and they've preserved it beautifully. And I look out here into Prague, which is where I currently am. I'm actually in the presidential suite of the Four Seasons making millions of fucking dollars. Wow, he loves to brag about it himself. Anyways, he's in Prague, beautiful place in Central Europe. Who the fuck wants to live in America? Why wouldn't you want to live amongst the fairy tale? Like people always say on Twitter, hey man, if I make money, I'm gonna move to Miami and do what? Fuck whores, get chlamydia. <laughs> 100% I prefer living in Eastern Europe over Miami. I've been to Miami, had fun, but no, it's cooler here. Uh, although Prague is not in Eastern Europe, it's in Central Europe, and there is a big difference. But anyways, let's see what else he says. Uh, I wouldn't recommend getting chlamydia in either, con in either part of the world. What is in Miami? Compare it to this. Look at the absolute beauty of ancient civilization. And what's most amazing is you can live here and you are like 3000% safer. No one's gonna kill you, no one's gonna rob you, no one's gonna shoot you. It costs less to live here than it does in America. <laughs> There's no tangible advantage to the USA except for the fact that you're an uncultured fuck. You're a dumbass who thinks that whores and hamburgers are worth more than the fucking ancient energies of humanity. Well, I have to give him that he's, he's funny when he's talking at times. So definitely in terms of culture, even here in Chisinau, in Moldova. Gotta say it's probably better than most parts of North America. And uh, if you're banging whores anywhere, whether it's here or in Miami, yeah, not gonna be the same as coming here and socializing 
and seducing the beauties of Eastern Europe. And yes, it costs dramatically less to live in a place like Chisinau or Prague where he is than it is going to be in Miami. So more bang for your buck for sure. If I get money, bro, I'll go. I, I just don't get it. I don't understand. How can you justify living in anywhere in America when places like this exist? When I'm in America, I'm constantly worried someone's going to shoot me in the face. In Prague, you can actually conceal carry weapons. I, I despise Americans. Luke, block all Americans. Block all. <laughs> the title says, uh, Undertake explains why Eastern Europe is better than America. Well, Prague says in Central Europe is actually further west than Vienna. And that's important because a lot of these labels about what is Eastern Europe are kind of redundant at these days. Made sense maybe in the 90s to talk about Prague being in Eastern Europe because it was in the former communist East. We're in half of politically Europe, not geographically. In fact, this would kind of be the center of Europe for looking at it geographically. I have a very geeky video that I shot many years ago about that up here, if you want more down below. But definitely these... Uh, labels like former Soviet Union becoming less and less relevant culturally, politically, and in terms of how you can live your best life. But definitely, I agree. Better to party in Prague than to hang out in Miami, in my opinion. One d downside to living in this part of Eastern Europe is the fact that this time of year, there is a strong allergy to ambrosia that many people suffer, like, suffer from, like me. So, yeah, you have the upsides and you have the downsides of being here. So, my apologies if I'm sniffling a little bit. But I need to take some antihistamines. Let's go on to another clip. There are countries in the world where there's a really interesting, delicate balance of uh, a government and a police force which are not strong. And when I'm saying that, I'm not saying I'm breaking the law. I'm not saying it in that way. I'm saying that minor infractions or tiny things are not going to be, I'm not going to be persecuted to the end of earth yeah, like yeah. I would in the UK for a parking ticket. Yeah, it's right? mad because they literally say in the UK all the time, people get caught more for speeding and shit like that than people getting caught for stabbing. A hundred percent, right? And this is what I even said. Like in Romania, you don't get parking tickets. Yeah. You just fucking park. You just dump the car. <laughs> nobody gives a shit, right? So it's just a different way of life over there. But at the same time, Romania and a few other countries in the world a lot of them are in Eastern Europe. They have a strong morality because they're very religious countries. So although the police are not seen as a strong police force, they're not like the English police, they're not as well-funded, they don't have as big, as fast cars, whatever, whatever. Yeah. It's actually very safe because people just have a different view of life. So here he kind of contradicts what he said about Chisinau when describing how it's safe to be in Romania. I will say that definitely he points out a very important trade-off, which is safety versus um, the level of strictness of the law. So... Here, for example, I always refer to the soft feeling of freedom, the sense that rule of law is not super strong, whether you're in Chisinau, in Moldova, uh, in Ukraine. Belarus is the opposite because it's a police state in effect, so there's a very strict application of the law, so you don't have that kind of freedom. Uh, but you do say have the safety, there's very little crime in uh, Belarus, but also here there isn't so much crime and in Ukraine there isn't so much crime. Romania tends to be a bit more law-abiding, but again crime is low. So yeah, sometimes by not having an overzealous police force or rule of law, you actually have a bit more freedom about the trivial things that he's talking about. So actually there I kind of agree with him. In Eastern Europe, in these countries, if we're saying Eastern Europe, we're still counting Romania as Eastern Europe, uh, definitely here in Moldova, you're less likely to have that strict enforcement and overzealousness, I think, of the rule of law that sometimes we get afflicted by in the West, especially during the COVID lockdowns, because when I was in Ukraine, it wasn't such a big deal. But I don't think it becomes from the people being more religious. It's true that probably Romanians might see a bit more religious, but here in Moldova or in Ukraine, don't think you find to be actually that religious. Even going to church is a lot less than you'll find, say, in probably back in Ireland where I grew up. I think people go to church more there and more, at least outwardly more religious, but they also then, yeah, have a lot more law-abiding state as well. So I wouldn't say it's because people are necessarily religious. You have a lot of religious places where the laws are very strict. The laws are not so strict. People break the law. They don't break the law. For example, I spend a lot of time in Brazil where people are definitely outwardly more religious, but like you can get shot for anything. It's worse than living in the US in terms of that kind of crime, right? So yeah, I don't really see much evidence for him talking about it because of people necessarily being religious, but definitely there is that soft feeling of freedom, I would say. Also, you'll hear the nomad capitalist Andrew Henderson talk about that kind of soft feeling as well. Definitely something that I'm big into, one of the main reasons that I like living in the real east of Europe. So in the 80s, California was probably beautiful. Everyone talks about California. It was probably the best place in the 80s. What, what can you compare it to? I mean, all of Eastern Europe was communist. 
Uh, you couldn't go Thailand or any of these other places. Like in the 80s, there was no competition. London and Paris and California, all these places were probably great. But now they literally can't compare. You can walk down a street in Warsaw, Poland. You are safer than anywhere else you're going to be. Everyone's kind. Everyone speaks English. You can eat good food. You can drink good coffee. Like, there's, there's nothing missing there now. So he's talking about Poland and Romania. Again, these Poland's more central Europe. It's in the EU. It's in NATO. Uh, NATO, you have Article 5 protection basically from the country being invaded by Russia. So very plus point if you're choosing to live somewhere. Probably that's going to be a big advantage in these days of Russia. Russian new attempts at imperialism like we see in Ukraine and possibly even here in Moldova. Uh, touch wood that this country uh, doesn't suffer the same fate going forward. I think you need to be going to the country when it's on and up. So I see that as being obviously Ukraine before Russia invaded, here in Moldova at the moment, as opposed to being in Poland, where, you know, you're kind of 20 years too late to the party because it's already in the EU since 2004, Romania since 2007, and life was very different back just around the time that they were joining. Things were a lot cheaper, for example, so things were better value for money. Uh, that's just a consequence of good economic policy that the countries have developed, especially Poland. It's been like, I don't know, for how many years in a row they've had strong economic growth. It's at least more or less 15 years, if I'm not mistaken. So it would have been better to have gotten in and bought your property, for example, back then, uh, than getting it when it's already, you know, reaching its catching up with the level of development as in the West. I always think it's good to get in early. It feels very positive and very masculine, and very feminine here. Like it's a very healthy, uh, very healthy culture I'm seeing. Well, this I'm is loving the, it. This is the crazy thing. The crazy thing about it all is without a family unit and without, you know, children and without people who are happy to be married and be together and, and, and give birth to, to babies, there is no future yeah. anyway. Yeah. Like we talk about future, what's yeah. the future? I read, a, new, I read a, a newspaper article about that Desmond is amazing kid and he was wearing a t-shirt saying, the future is queer. And I sat and, oh, and I sat and thought, okay, it's but fucked. there is no such thing as a queer future. Yeah. It takes heterosexual sex to even create a baby. Like, yeah. well, what is a queer future? Like, yeah. in what crazy perverse world are babies born in little test tubes and everyone's gay? And it's just like, the whole thing is messed it's up. It's super retarded. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> so he's talking about it being less woke in Central and Eastern Europe. Definitely true. Uh, there's less of that kind of progressive culture, but I wouldn't say that people are necessarily more traditional, especially the women. Uh, I think they're different than in Western Europe, but I think it's a bit of a mis misnomer, start calling them traditional values because it may be less woke, but in fact, things like divorce rates are super high here in Eastern Europe. So you know, like Moldova, Ukraine, Belarus, and Russia. Um, and also the birth rate is quite low. It's actually lower than in Western Europe in a lot of these countries, or it's pretty similar. It depends where you are exactly. But in my home country, Ireland has a, a higher fertility rate than actually here in, say, Moldova or Ukraine. So can't say that they're all sitting at home baking cookies and, um, being, you know, being faithful to their man, one marriage, no divorce, pumping out 10 kids. That's actually what happens in Eastern Europe. So, uh, yeah, a bit of a misnomer, but yeah, things like wokeism, uh, definitely a lot less of uh, an issue, shall we say, than in Western Europe. That is definitely true. So in conclusion, just before I react to some of his comments about Eastern European women, just the countries or uh, as a location to live in, I would say the following, that if you are looking for a place where the level English is pretty high, level infrastructure is good, um, but you know, you're probably a little bit too late to the party in terms of getting the big opportunities, like there's gonna be a huge boost in economic development relative to what came before, and um, the women have been more beautiful, then pick a place like Romania, where he went to, or Poland, where it's a little bit more bland, it's a little bit more developed, you can use English, there's gonna be a lot of international tourism, and, um, you know, rule of law is less strict than in Western Europe, but it's uh, definitely stricter than it's gonna be, say, here, further east, um, in this time period of war in Ukraine, of course, if you were in Poland or in Romania, you have a country that's already in NATO, in the European Union. There are mutual defense clauses, Article 5 of NATO, so that's U.S. security umbrella. So probably that makes it a good bit safer in terms of investing in. It's a lot less likely that there will be an invasion by Russia uh, compared to being here. But on the flip side then, you know, it's less risky, but then probably the upside, the, the rewards are a little bit less. It's probably a little less 
crazy, then it's going to be here. Parties are going to be hard, more hardcore. Women are going to be more beautiful. Uh, the prices are going to be lower here. Um, what else can I say? Rule of law even less. So you're going to have more of that soft feeling of, of freedom. So it's kind of what you're looking for. I think maybe if you haven't lived outside of the West, then going to a place like Romania or Poland is going to be less of a cultural shock because it's just a lot more... Uh, westernized, it is part of the West. It's actually complete misnomer to call it Eastern Europe and say that it's dramatically different. It's actually already integrated into uh, Euro-Atlantic institutions. That's just the reality. It's part of NATO and part of the European Union. So it is the West, it's just the Eastern part of the West. Whilst here, it is like Moldova is now a candidate country for the EU. So is um, Ukraine and then uh, whilst those countries are not planning to, well, definitely Moldova is not planning to join NATO, it's a neutral country, they are in that part. So the upside is that it's a country where there are going to be a greater uh, amount of opportunities, I think, than necessarily taking the safer option of going to somewhere like Romania or uh, to Poland. So let's go into some more of these final clips. I'm telling you, people, people really have this view of Eastern European girls as sluts because a lot of them are working girls. Like if you go to, yeah, like if you go to Dubai or if you go to a brothel in Germany, there's a bunch of Romanian girls, right? So they think all oh, Romanian girls are sluts. I say, no, Romanian girls are not sluts. They're smart. If a Romanian girl wants to be a slut, she does it for money. And if she doesn't do it for money and she's not a slut, she's exceptionally hard to sleep with. A lot of these girls in Bucharest are 25, 26. They've got two men, three men body counts. Sorry. <clears throat> they're very hard. If they want to be a hoe, they're going to be a hoe and get paid. Only an English or an American girl is stupid enough to be a hoe for free. Because over here, they'll be a hoe because they were drunk. They'll just be a hoe because they're dumb. Oh, I slept with a bunch of men. Oh, he was funny. So he jizzed on me. Like, they're just idiots. In, the, in Eastern Europe, they're far too intelligent for that. So he makes a big dichotomy between how promiscuous women are in the West versus Eastern Europe. Now, I think that's a little bit exaggerated to say that Eastern European women, if they're going to have more than a couple of sexual partners, then they're a prostitute. Definitely that stereotype comes from the fact that you're even there that a lot of women who work as prostitutes are from Eastern Europe. So we'll say Romania, um, Moldova, um, Russia, Ukraine, Belarus, and less so from Central Europe, places like Prague, or Czech Czechia, Poland, a lot less than it would have been maybe 20 years ago. And that's just a fact of the economic development of the countries that they come from and the rights that they have to work in jobs other than prostitution. Uh, so to say that it's, you know, it's just the ones that want to do it for money, I think that's leaving out the, the economic reality rather than the moral factors and uh, economic opportunities. I think that will probably change in the future. It might be girls from somewhere else, not from uh, these regions here in the east of Europe that work in prostitution in the west because yeah things improve economically here and they have better opportunities outside of prostitution the gap between what they can make there uh, working as a prostitute versus doing something else becomes lower and then that's not where you find them anymore so um, wouldn't say that that's necessarily the case but definitely uh, women here tend to be more uh, I would say more prude than expected based on that stereotype and probably yes they are less promiscuous in general than in Western Europe so that is definitely he is crushing a stereotype so I agree with on that just as a little bit exaggerated well that's basically everything with Andrew Tate is exaggerated so he wants to get a response uh, and it's better to get a response by being a little bit more extreme in your comments. They understand that the number one commodity a female has is beauty. And if they're born with it, they're not going to fucking waste it going out getting hammered and banging Joe whoever. They're not going to do that. They're not stupid like that. So Western girls are extremely easy to sleep with compared to Eastern European women. Eastern European women are much, much harder. I would agree with that just simply because they're less likely to be promiscuous. However, he kind of paints it as if like a one night stand is never going to happen in Eastern Europe. And that is completely not the case. If you were perceived as so much higher value and you have, you know, great... In interpersonal skills, uh, then yes, you can um, sleep with women here on, a, you know, on the first night or very quickly uh, who don't, maybe haven't slept with so many men in the past. And I also think he's exaggerating how little they, partners they may have had. Uh, that might be wishful thinking on his, on his part. Uh, but overall, I agree with him that Eastern, Eastern European women probably are more prudish than Western European women and actually harder for a foreign guy who just comes over on a weekend. Uh, probably going to be harder here than going partying in Newcastle or somewhere in England uh, if you're just looking to get laid with anything. Probably better to stay home. Those beautiful women in the world are not walking around the mall 
in fucking Mi Minnesota. They're not. They're on billionaires' boats in Dubai. This is just the world that we live in now. You're all in Mykonos, in Scorpios, with $20,000 tables. I know. I've been there. I've done it. So, when you see a rich man like me, and he's flossing, he's flexing, he's spending money, you know that's a guy who likes to fuck beautiful women. When you see a rich man who saves, 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 is a guy who's happy to fuck an average woman. Very, very average, because he has no ambition. Oh, she, she's okay, I'm a bit fat. Mm. Not me, I'm a gangster. So don't email me again and say, oh, why do you spend so much money? Listen, I'm living my life. I'm a G, I'm a Don. And I'm living my life surrounded by beautiful women. That's expensive. Beautiful women are the most expensive hobby in the world. If you want to sleep with beautiful women, it is the most expensive hobby in the world. Everything has to be fresh and expensive. So finally, Tate claims that to have access to the most beautiful women, they're all going to be in places like Dubai or Mykonos. And I think too for the very elite, the kind of Olympian level women, like the really top women, it is true that they have so many offers and so many options, especially during the summer. And they will kind of go on this kind of party tour to the most glamorous places. And actually, if you don't have access to them otherwise, like you're not an insider here in Eastern Europe, then yes, you probably would have to pay the 40K at the, to get the table at the Top Club of Mignus to actually get to meet those kind of women. Uh, it should be put in a disclaimer that a lot of time you will end up in kind of a sugar daddy, uh, gold digger kind of sugar, sugar baby, the kind of gold digger kind of frame. If you go to those places and you're only, you're leading with money, for example, of course, you might have a chance with those kind of girls, at least the section of them that are open maybe for prostitution or maybe close to prostitution in terms of the just there looking for the guys who were able to afford the 40K or 50K, whatever the payment is for a table at one of those kind of places at the moment. It was 40, 50,000. Last time I uh, was at a place like that, which isn't very often, I will confess. And uh, here in East Europe, actually, if you have your lifestyle set up, well, you would meet exactly the same girls and you would meet them more frequently than the one opportunity or two opportunities, three opportunities you have during the summer at these kind of huge parties, dropping that kind of money by just setting up your lifestyle correctly and actually living in the same areas and going to the same places. And uh, yeah, actually getting to meet them without having to drop all that cash and have a lot more time. So, uh, and you will probably filter through the ones who are less the gold digger type, but just as beautiful. But I won't deny that having money gives you the access to those kind of places where it happens to be in, you know, somewhere like Dubai or Mykonos or London or New York or Sao Paulo at the top club. Uh, you know, money buys you access, but it will not get you the beautiful, sincere women of Eastern Europe. It's just a booster in a way to have quicker access. So partly agree with him on that. But if with, you know, and it was one of my critiques, it's like if your Instagram is set up to attract basically insecure young men and gold diggers, then that is basically the kind of frame and who you're going to basically end up with uh, most likely when you go to that kind of club in Mykonos. So in conclusion to this video, what can I say? Is it here like white Africa, as Tay claimed at the beginning of the video? Uh, maybe if you go to, you know, not here in Chisinau anymore, but maybe you went to, maybe before the war, I was going to say Mariupol, but some kind of smaller town um, in Belarus, like Gomel, it's not even white Africa there, to be honest. It's not like Africa. I'm trying to think, but definitely if you were living in, say, Kiev, um, it is not white Africa. It's actually as good, if not better, than living in Western Europe because you're going to have really good cafes, restaurants, bars, uh, clubs. You're going to have the same DJs probably play at those clubs that are playing at the top club in Berlin. It's going to be 20%, 30% of the price and there's gonna be hotter chicks everywhere than if you're gonna be in Berlin or New York um, or even Miami, to be frank, there are gonna be hotter chicks around. So uh, to call it white Africa, absolutely BS. It is not white Africa, whether you happen to be in Chisinau or in Kiev. Um, definitely the level of infrastructure was horrific. Definitely 10 years ago, I'd say, but it has been improving gradually. And uh, yeah, you gotta decide how you're gonna set up your life because when I look at Andrew Tate's decision to say live in Romania, live outside in Bucharest, and I kind of, in a kind of, I guess, uh, how would I say, uh, upper middle class kind of neighborhood with an you know, upper middle class house. It's not really the baller lifestyle. And I definitely wouldn't pick Bucharest in the first place to have a baller lifestyle because I just don't think it's the best place to try and do that. First of all, it's gonna be more expensive and you're actually not gonna have as realistically probably the, even the access to the kind of baller lifestyle being in Bucharest versus being in a, in a Kiev or in a 
even a Minsk or maybe in St. Petersburg or Moscow, those bigger cities, Odessa, you're going to have more access to that kind of lifestyle there than you're going to have in Bucharest. So it is an interesting decision that he decided to go there. I wouldn't have picked there. The only upside really probably is the fact that it is in the EU and NATO, so a bit more stable. So if you are interested in having an absolute baller experience, the real one, and not ending up in Bucharest as opposed to being in a cooler city somewhere in East Europe. Now we do have the war in Ukraine so I'm not necessarily advising everyone to go to Ukraine or to Russia or to Belarus at the moment. It's actually partly why I'm here in Chisinau and I'm going to have a client here actually this weekend. We are going to live bizarre experience together because I am known by some of my former clients as the insider and that's why I picked here because it is actually one of the good alternatives. I'm not recommending uh, Bucharest for living the bizarre experience. It's for a different type of person, I think. I think it's a lot safer um, and a little bit more tame, definitely, than being out here in the real east of Europe. But there will be a few alternative locations for the Tsar experience uh, in the Baltics and in Central Asia and here in Moldova in the coming months. Hopefully the war, fingers crossed, touch wood, it ends in Ukraine pretty soon. And we can also consider going back to places like Kharkiv, which is Gonna link it up on a card down below in the description video that you should go and look at first before you apply for the Zara experience because that's actually where I made the last video about the Zara experience in Kharkiv with my clients. You get a better idea what is uh, involved in living the Zara experience coming on that unforgettable weekend with me. Down below, if you think it's for you, I think it's gonna be a good fit, fill out the application form. It is there in the description to this video from White Africa, according to Andrew Tate. Just do a bit of a 360. I'm not sure how African it looks to you, but I will bid you a Sara from Wasa and a great evening, afternoon, morning, wherever you are watching this video from. And I will see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao. Sar Experience.